Zero to SAO. How far does this rabbit hole go? I'm Braden Lane, and I just want to get a few things out of the way. Uh, first of all, I hate bullet slides. This will be the only bullet slide in this entire presentation. Um, bullet slides tend to be used when you don't know what you're going to say, which is rare for me. And they also are when you need a crutch because you didn't practice, which hopefully I've done a little bit more of this time around. There's going to be a lot covered in this presentation, and I hope you are paying attention. How did I get here? A handful of years ago, I had this idea of a little electronic puzzle fit in your pocket. It'd be kind of cool. But uh, my electronics experience pretty much ended at what is a resistor when I was in high school. So I needed to start from the very beginning and learn just the basics. So, of course, what did I do? I hacked it all. I... Uh, did some YouTube videos, asked lots of questions of my friends, um, and got just enough knowledge to be able to put together a puzzle that used some touch sensors, some LEDs, and you know even had a UART connection to your computer. And uh, that was my first foray into electronics. Uh, but I don't recommend that's where you start. A much easier place to start is something like a simple add-on. Um, these are typically just a creative looking printed circuit board. We have Marvin here um, and a couple of LEDs. And then the SAO connector has a standard pinout and that's really easy to follow. So it's a very easy sort of entry level. They're also a lot of fun. If you already do electronics, create an SAO. They're great to have and give out or even make a little bit of money with them. So everybody who starts these projects uh, has some background, some set of experience. Uh, mine was not electronics, and I'm not really an artist. Uh, as I used to tell my design team, uh, I graduated third grade with an art degree in crayons, and that was about the extent of my art capabilities. Um, my solution is I either uh, hire it out or find some examples online that I can kind of copy or manipulate. Uh, um, the math and the science, that's, that's a little more of my, my familiarity. And now that I've been doing electronics for a few years, I'm pretty comfortable in that space as well. But uh, for a simple add-on, you know, art's kind of a, a key element of it. And uh, you can do your art in a number of different ways. If you're, a, you know, an artist that works in acrylics or paints or watercolors, that's absolutely an acceptable place to start. And it's uh, much more creative than anything I can do. Um, if you like CAD and you like engineering tools and stuff, you can start creating your art there, uh, create it on a computer. Um, kind of think of these as, you know, you can create art uh, in, uh, you know, digital form, analog form, however you want to do it. Uh, you start with what's familiar with you and then we work out from there. The difference between something like acrylics, where you have an infinite palette of colors, uh, and a printed circuit board is you have a limited number of colors and you have you each one has to fit onto a layer uh, in the printed circuit board. So the topmost layer and the very bottommost layer, these are the silk layers on the top and the bottom of the board. And then uh, that's typically one color. Then there's a mask layer and that's typically a solid color. Uh, traditional printed circuit boards were green. Uh, thankfully now we're not limited to green. Uh, I think uh, a lot of the printed circuit board companies now, they do green, blue, red, yellow, black, white. Uh, we're starting to see more pink. And of course, there's uh, a few places that do a really nice looking purple. Uh, in between uh, the mask on the top and the bottom, there's a copper layer on the top and a copper layer on the bottom. And then right in the middle of the board, there is this substrate or what they call FR4. Um, and there's a couple of different types of FR4. The most popular one, though, is kind of this pale yellow color. Um, and it's actually translucent. Light will pass through it if you, uh, if you want to go that route. Um, you'll also see some people working with a black substrate. It looks great. Uh, light won't pass through it, but you can use that black color uh, in your designs. Speaking of which, here's some uh, examples. These are far more creative than anything I've done. Um, but if we look at these, these are all being made up of just those layers I talked about. Space Girl Solder Kit, though, that's an interesting one they actually found a printed circuit board company that would do two different mask colors. Um, and so they did a purple and they did a blue. And if you look closely, that purple, there's actually two shades, and I'll show you how they got that. And if we look at Foxy Pride, uh, they got this yellow. That's actually gold. That's uh, what they call E-N-I-G. It's a gold finish on a printed circuit board. 
Uh, you can also get a silvery finish, which is Hazel, which is hot air uh, solder leveling. Um, and so these are completely basic printed circuit boards. Like I said, the only difference is Space Girl here actually uses two different mask colors. Here are some of mine. They're uh, a bit more simple. Uh, each year for my family and friends, I do a Christmas ornament. And my very first one was the Carol of the Bells, followed by Mr. Snowman, the Tin Soldier, and then this year, both for Christmas and for uh, my simple add-on that I'm having here, is uh, Marvin. So I talked about, uh, one of the examples is two different shades of the same color. Here's an example from my challenge coin this year. This is exactly the same challenge coin manufactured two different ways. So if we look at it, the one on the far left, it's darker red than the one which has got a very vivid bright red. And if we look at the, the close-ups of it, you can kind of see what's happening here. The difference is the mask, that red mask color, is exactly the same on both of them. However, the first one, the far left, there's no copper layer right below it. So in this case, what we have is we have the black silk on top of a red mask directly on the FR4. The one next to it is black silk, red mask, copper, FR4. And so that's how I got these two different sh shades of red in this example. When creating your art, you might start with a full color image. For instance, like I said, if you had worked from a painting, or in this case, this is Sarah Cladlow. She is uh, the protagonist in my stories. Um, and it's a full color. Well, with the exception of a couple uh, attempts in the recent history, full color PCB isn't an option. Um, hopefully we'll get there in a few years, but uh, you know, it's very expensive and it's a one-off and uh, printed circuit board houses are not really providing it yet. So how do we get, if we've got a full color image to something we can work with? So here's our full color. Again, this is Sarah Cladlow. That's our original. First step is we need to make it a grayscale. So you can use any tool you want. You can use uh, Photoshop, you can use GIMP, you can use almost anything. There's even online tools uh, to create a grayscale out of it. Play around a little bit with the grayscale to get the tones you want. Um, and then this becomes the starting point. But again, remember, we need just black white. You know? So how do we get just black and white out of a grayscale? Well, historically in the newspaper industry, they used something called halftone. Halftone is a series of dots of various sizes. And so if you put a very tiny black dot over a white surface, it looks fairly light. You put a very large black dot over a white surface and it looks fairly dark. So by varying the size of the dot, you can vary the tone that is perceived from it. But this image is actually just black or white. Another technique is what you see on engraving, you know, on banknotes and those kinds of things. Um, and there are online tools, uh, uh, Photoshop has a capability, uh, Illustrator has a capability. There's also an open source tool called Zebra Trace. Um, and it will take a PNG file, a grayscale PNG file, and it will figure out how to do uh, this simulated uh, etching or engraving technique. Uh, and my, my Carol of the Bells ornament used this technique. And of course, you can go simply to line art. Um, but... Um, this works well with any color printed circuit board, but line art really lends itself well if you started with something that was already black and white that you could use as line art. And our example today will go that route. Uh, the last piece is if you're using an irregular, you're gonna end up with an irregular uh, simple add-on, then what you wanna do is you wanna take whatever your artwork was originally, enlarge it just a tiny bit and make it a solid color. And this will become a silhouette or the outline of your printed circuit board. So let's start with probably the most simple approach. Let's just really keep it simple. And that is we can take an image, black and white image, and we can import it. You can even take a grayscale, but it's probably better to know that you've got a black and white, but we can import it and generate the art for our printed circuit board directly from black and white. So let's take a look at that. So today I'll be using KiCad for most of my work. Um, there are other tools out there. This is the one I'm most familiar with. If you have never used 
uh, electronic design tools, you might want to take a look at something called Easy EDA. It's available both as an online tool and a, and a partially offline tool. It's free and it's great. It's also integrated with JLC PCB if you end up using them for your printed circuit boards. Um, but it also can be used with any of them because it will generate the necessary files. But let's take a look at this. So I can do an image converter and let me import that image we were just playing with. So uh, here it is. Um, oh, it's kind of big, 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters. We don't want that. Let's uh, shrink it down to 100. Okay. And uh, you'll notice up here, it's showing me the original. So let me just uh, pan over to a simple spot on here. You can kind of see what it what happens. So this is nice and smooth. This was actually a, a, a line drawing that was created by an artist I know. Um, I pleaded, I said, I need a piece of artwork for my presentation, and he said he'd make it for me. So that's how I got this one. Um, again, I'm not an artist. Um, but what will end up being rendered eventually is pure black and white. And so there's a setting over here for where that threshold is. So if we go to the black and white and we scroll over, you can actually see it's, a, it's no longer having those really nice, smooth, anti-aliased edges anymore. But it still does look quite good. So this is actually what will become uh, the artwork for our printed circuit board. It'll be at this level. So we've taken that 500 by 500. We've scaled it down to 100 by 100. We've loaded. Now we just want to export it as a footprint. Okay. So that's all we really want, footprint. It's going to be on the silk layer. And so we click export. We, uh, I've done this once before, but let me see if I can find it. There it is. Uh, so this is our thief as a PNG being exported as a footprint. We do a save. I've already done it, so that's good. Okay, now let's go take a look at our actual schematic for our simple add-on today. So it's uh, pretty basic. There's our connector using the pinouts that are in the specification. We have our voltage and we have our ground. We have a little resistor, which just uh, reduces the amount of current our LEDs can draw. And then we have a series of LEDs. Let's take a look at the, the actual printed circuit board for this. So I've already created it, wanted to save us some time. So here we are, uh, we're gonna end up with a circle. So there's our connector and our LEDs. So what we wanna do now is we wanna import that uh, new footprint that we just created. Okay, that didn't work. It's a bit too big. So let's go back to here. Let's set this at, let's try 70. I think that might've been the right number. We'll export it again. Overwrite the old one. Now let's do that update. Let's see if this looks a little better. Ah, much better. Though, if anything, it might be just a tiny bit small. We can fix that. We'll go, let's try 72. Export. And reload. That looks pretty good. Now we can actually move that a little bit if we want. Kind of get it close to centered on our board. There we go. Okay. So there is our uh, simple add-on with the artwork on top. And we can take a look see what it looks like and there it is and so if we look really closely there's our connector there's that little resistor we had and we placed an led where uh, the object is that the thief is trying to get and a series of leds down the arm and these will all light up so the arm will light up as well as this object so you might want to set these to say a, a white color or a red color 
and then this might be some other color to designate that that's what they're going after. So there's our, uh, there's our first example. Now let's look at a slightly different way of doing the same thing. And that is using Inkscape. Inkscape is a vector-based one, so it's kind of the difference of, you know, we were working with something similar to Photoshop, now we're going to something similar to um, Adobe Illustrator. Inkscape is an open source, free available uh, vector graphic uh, tool set. One of the nice things about Inkscape is somebody has developed an add-in for it called SVG to Shenzhen. And while the name might be a mouthful, the functionality is great for creating these kinds of uh, printed circuit boards where there's a combination of art and functionality. So let's go take a look at it. So the first thing you're going to do when you use this uh, add-in is you're going to do what they call prepare the document or prepare the board. What that will do is that will actually create all of these layers. And if you look closely, these layers mimic what we were just talking about. There's a front silk mask and copper, and there's a back silk mask and copper. Now we can start placing things on these different layers uh, to affect how we're going to get the, the types of display or the experience we want for the artwork. Um, I've gone ahead and imported uh, the vector for the project that we were just using so that... Uh, you're not seeing me do lots of little minuscule drawing, uh, but I now want to walk you through the various things that I've put on the layer. So let me turn off uh, all the layers for, for a moment. And so there's our edge cut layer. So unlike when we imported uh, graphics for just a footprint, now we can import like everything for the board. So we can import, uh, uh, the cut layer, so the edge cut. So if we wanted to have an irregular shape when we do that here, we can also do all the silk. We can even affect uh, the mask. And so we know that the mask is a solid single color. So if in the layer here we add something to the mask, it actually is going to delete it from that solid color. So it's kind of the, the flip of what you'd be looking at. But now let's take a look. So if I now have, if I turn on the silk layer, this should look pretty familiar, but what I've emitted here is the arm. And uh, I realized I was looking at that arm and saying, well, you know, that arm kind of looks like it's a mechanical thing. Wouldn't it be cool if that arm were silver? Well, how do you do silver? Well, if I have a silk layer, let's call it uh, black, and we have a mask layer, we can call that white. If I take away the silk and the mask, but I leave the copper layer, and I use that H-A-S-L finish, right? Well, that finish is basically a solder finish. It kind of looks like shiny chrome or metal. So by exposing that on the copper layer right here, I will get that arm, and it will look like it's made out of metal. So uh, then the last set of steps, uh, I needed to add some stuff to the mask layer, both the front and the back mask layer. The reason for that is by adding something to the mask layer with this tool, it actually deletes it from the actual mask that ends up on the printed circuit board. Well, why would we want to do that? Well, if I delete the silk, the mask, and the copper from both the top and the bottom, all I'm left with is that FR4. And as I mentioned before, the FR4 is translucent. We can shine light through it. So this technique allows me to put LEDs on the back side of my board instead of the front, leave a nice smooth front surface, put the LEDs on the back and have them shine through so now you can see, okay, I'm going to have LEDs that are going to shine through where the metal arm is and shine through where the phone is in his pocket. So I've now turned everything back on. Okay, we have our whole thing with all the different layers, and there's lots of information on these layers. Uh, you know, that text is up on that layer. Um, the, the little thief gentleman down here, the pants, the circle that's around the outer edge, uh, in my mask layer... I have the things, the phone and the arm. In my copper layer, I have the arm and all those little ribs. So a number of things are each on each layer. And I go into the extension, and now I do export. So uh, the key thing here is you want to make sure flatten Bezier is set. And we want to export as a module, not a project or not a PNG, a module, because then we can, uh, we can attach that to our existing schematic. We click Apply. 
It's not the fastest thing in the world, but uh, depending on the complexity of your project, uh, it gets done in a couple of seconds. And now we have created uh, a footprint object with all this detail on it. So now let's go back to KiCad. Let's switch to our next project. Quickly review the schematic. Looks very similar to the last one. There's just a few less LEDs on it. And now if we look at the printed circuit board, looks very familiar. The only thing that's changed here is I have created this object right here. This is actually an exclude area. And if I open this up, what I'm saying is I don't want to have any copper fill in the top or bottom copper layers. So that's what that funny little shape is. And rather than create it live during the demo, it's all these little points and you're clicking and clicking and clicking and you're moving them around. I just figured I'd create it ahead of time. So there we go. Now, just like before, I'm going to load in that new footprint that we've just created. There it is. And in addition to all this silk information, we now have some copper and we have some keep out areas and we have areas that have no mask. So if I were to look at the, let's come down to just as an example, see, that's the mask layer. That's the back mask layer. So let's go back home now. So now if I fill this, there we go, we've filled it. And now let's take a look at that as our 3D object. So now we have this, the light will actually shine right through this arm and the LED light will shine right through that phone. This will be metallic and then this will be black this will be white, and there's our SAO. We can look at it from the back and see I've placed these LEDs so they just shine into this void area. And so those the light from those LEDs will pass through the FR4 and be visible from the front. Great technique for being able to create a nice, smooth, flat surface on your printed circuit board but still have your LED function. So there's Inkscape for the same technique. I used KiCad for today's demos. Uh, Easy EDA, like I said, is something you can use it. There's an online version of it. There is also um, a semi-offline version. Uh, so that's kind of great. Uh, very easy to use tool. Uh, doesn't have all the functionality of something like KiCad or Eagle or Altium. Uh, but it's a great place to start if you have never used an EDA tool and you think that KiCad is going to be a little bit more than what you want to attack. Uh, but uh, I started with KiCad and I've loved it and it's, it's grown and become uh, quite capable. So today we built uh, an SAO, a simple add-on. It was just a series of LEDs, a resistor, and that six-pin header. Uh, if you want to make it a pin, uh, all you do is delete that header and add a battery holder and a little on-off switch. Uh, and the rest of the, the LEDs and the layout and all that stays the same. Uh, you want to get a little bit more creative, you can add a little microcontroller and some programming. Uh, keep the battery holder. You could even add a little piezo buzzer. Uh, and uh, this is what I do each year for a holiday ornament for family and friends. Uh, it's very fun. So we've created the printed circuit board. We've done all the work on it. And now you want to get it fabricated so you can you can build your simple add-on. Uh, domestically in the United States, Osh Park is a, is a great resource for a small number of PCBs. They have that lovely purple color you can find. Um, if you're starting to order more of them, you might be looking at some of the Chinese uh, options. Uh, PCBWay, PCBBuy, JLC, PCB, I've used all of these. Um, their printed circuit boards are very affordable. The shipping is a bit much. So they become cost-effective when you're buying, you know, a lot, like you want 50 or 100 of your board, then, you know, it makes sense to do this. If you're only buying five or 10, that shipping cost gets to be pretty high. 
However, if you join up with some other friends and you pool all your orders together, you can place one order, multiple printed circuit boards, and you get to sort of divide up that shipping cost. It becomes quite effective. So this has been Zero to SAO. The question is, who's the rabbit now? I am Braden Lane. You can reach me at bradenlane.com. Uh, my challenge coin is located under aosc.cc. That's Adventures of Sarah Cladlow. And on Twitter, I am Braden Lane. Thank you.